It's a new year in downtown Summit, and I can't wait to introduce you to a couple more of our fabulous businesses. I'm Emmy Havis, and this is Meet the Merchants. We're off to a start this year with two terrific businesses. The Summit House Restaurant, we're going to actually be in the kitchen with executive chef Martin Kester, and then we're going to go down the street and spend a little time at the Summit Health Shop with Tussar, I love that name, Tussar Patel. So before we do that, though, I would like to say a fond farewell to two of our businesses in town that have just left. The, uh, the Teapot, who has been in town way longer than I have, well over 30 years. The, uh, Joan Bowman and her two daughters, Marty and Lori, have decided to retire, and we're really, really sad about it because they are really part of the fabric of Downtown Summit for so many years. And then Lord Ivy at the other end of town, Inga and Robert have decided to move closer to their home in Clinton and they are opening on Bridge Street in Frenchtown. So if you're down the Frenchtown area, please stop by and say hello. So we really hate to see them leave. But on the flip side of that, Serena and Lily just opened. Fabulous new store in town, home decorating, linens, decorative accessories, and they have redone an entire building. Hopefully, in a future show, we'll get together with them and get to know them a little better. So let's take a walk up to the Summit House and get in the kitchen with Chef Martin. Here we are at the Summit House on the corner of Maple Street and Springfield Avenue, and I'm here between two very handsome gentlemen. Why wouldn't you want to be here? This is Dylan Baker, the owner, one of the owners, I should say, of the restaurant, and the general manager, Justin Lord. Gentlemen, thank you so much for having us today. This is really a treat to get to know you. Well, let me start with you, Dylan. Um, this restaurant, you've been open almost a year now. Yeah, it seems longer because it took a long time to get here, didn't it? <laughs> we all waited with anticipation. Yeah, that's great. How long ago did you have the idea to do this? When were you struck by the restaurant bug? You know, we moved to uh, Summit about eight years ago, eight and a half years ago now. And uh, love going to the restaurants here and going to the city and seeing what was happening in New York. Mm -hmm. And thought there was room for maybe another uh, great restaurant in town. Mm -hmm. So. Um, talking to our, our, who became our partners, uh, Sarah and Tyler Reeder, my mm -hmm. wife Melissa and I, uh, were struck upon, you know, let's, let's give it a shot. Mm -hmm. And we looked for probably about three years for a liquor license to become available. And that was the, the biggest hurdle, is mm -hmm. trying to find uh, an available license. Mm -hmm. And we finally did find one. We had some opportunity to look around for a space. And this corner of Springfield and Maple, I think, is one of the best corners in town. Mm -hmm. Iconic. Iconic. It is. And it's a historic building. Some mm -hmm. people don't know that this was originally the first YMCA mm -hmm. built in town. A uh, building from 1896. And um, things, everything gelled. Now, I understand there used to be a Summit House restaurant in town. There, there was many. So, um, oh, really? Jonathan Crane Bunnell, really the town fond right. founder, um, brought the railroad through town. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they set up the depot, uh, when the train first came through town, he built a boarding house and called it Summit House. It's on the site of what's now the Presbyterian okay. Church, right up the street, right up the street, and right within mm -hmm. eyeshot of mm -hmm. the uh, the current train station. Mm -hmm. uh, so, some of the first families to come visit town stayed at uh, Bonnell's. Summit House Boarding House. Mm -hmm. uh, it then moved across the street to the site of the current YMCA and the original one burnt down uh, and then moved to the depot and was finally shuttered in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. um, and we thought, you know, through a little magical thinking, what if there had always been that Summit House mm -hmm. and we found it on the corner of Springfield and Maple and peeled back the boards yeah. and restored it mm -hmm. uh, to something of its former glory. Yeah. Well, that, I'm sorry, go ahead. Again, through magical thinking, you yeah. know, um, none of those things really transpired, but it gave us great um, launching off point sure. and to start thinking about what it could be. Sure. And, you know, it is great. You, you get the sense of the um, old building. I'm so glad you went back to the brick walls and these big windows, which just bring you right out onto the street. And it is 
I love the gas lamps. I mean, they are the best. And coming down the street at night, especially now when it's dark, when I go home, I look in and see the happy diners. It's, it's, it gives off a good vibe. So Justin, tell me a little bit about your philosophy for um, the restaurant business. Well, have, were you in restaurants before this? Mm -hmm. What did you do before, life before Summit House? I've been in restaurants for a little over 20 years now. Oh, my goodness. But a majority. You don't look old enough. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. A <laughs> uh, majority of my time was spent at a restaurant called Per Se, which is a Thomas Keller restaurant in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, three Michelin star restaurant. Some would call it the height of fine dining. And mm -hmm. that's where I really learned the essence of hospitality and mm -hmm. that it really comes from within. And it's, you know, yes, I agree. It, it's kind of mutual. You mm -hmm. make someone feel good in your restaurant, in mm -hmm. your home, and you feel good in return. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we want to instill in the staff here. Mm -hmm. we want the, the sense of community, because the community here has been so generous with us and giving in great compliments all the time, and mm -hmm. we want you know, them to have a place to go for a little bit of respite and mm -hmm. fun times. Tell me a little about the wine program, because I think people are really interested in that. Well, it really stemmed from uh, Chef Kester's view of his food and the menu, trying to support local, mm -hmm. seasonal, um, mainly uh, farmers, growers, uh, vineyard managers who respect their land. Mm -hmm. So the list focuses mainly on organic and biodynamic wines. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say about 75 to 80 percent of them are in, within that category. We have about 165 selections right now, mm -hmm. um, ranging from all over. But uh, what is also a little uh, feather in the cap is we have a lot of esoteric grape varieties. Mm -hmm. That's something that really uh, I get really excited about. Yeah. You, know, you can find a a grape that you never knew existed and then when you start diving into it about the history of where it came from mm -hmm. you realize that maybe you know in southern Italy or in the center of Spain there's a small little region that has been making those wines yeah. for hundreds of years and you never knew about them yeah and you get all these new flavors you get all these new ideas and then you can see how they would pair with the food too yeah I think that's great and I think it's great that you've you've taken a local focus. I mean, I know it's all a big thing for them to table, but I do feel that shopping local, um, getting your products local is just, again, that sense of community, that reason to be involved. And I think when people see that that's what, what you're doing and what the menu consists of, they want to be part of it. I think it's a big drawing card. Um, Dylan, tell me a little bit about your decor in here, what you were going for. I mean, it's gorgeous, but what was the idea? Yeah, back to the original idea that there had been a Summit House mm -hmm. in town ever since the uh, 1840s, really. Um, we wanted to try and borrow little pieces, like if it had been here for over 150 years, mm -hmm. what, would, um, what would we see? So uh, some things like the ceiling uh, are um, reminiscent of an Edwardian ceiling where mm -hmm. we'd see coffers mm -hmm. in the ceiling. So we made it a little bit more modern by having the molding but mm -hmm. removing the coffer. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the windows that you commented on earlier yeah. uh, are a nod to really a Victorian look, which is a triple tier window, mm -hmm. which you really don't see in any homes other than Victorians, yeah. where they would open the top or the bottom depending on how they wanted to cool or heat the, heat the mm -hmm. home. Um, the floor is uh, a nod to what you would see in a Parisian bistro of, you know, um, and some 1950s um, modernism going mm -hmm. on as well. So we really wanted to kind of be selective and curate little pieces from over the, the millennia mm -hmm. and um, bring them all together. Were you actively involved in it? I mean, were you picking the pieces and making the... You, you sound like it. <laughs> like you had your finger on the pulse of this, this job. I literally... Um, for the wainscoting, it was around the restaurant. Oh, we literally, I rented a U-Haul and drove to Pennsylvania to meet with an Amish mill worker oh, did who you? had just oh, taken yeah. down a barn oh, and milled perfect. it milled it into the wainscoting. Yeah. So, uh, same with the tables. He built our tables. They're both 250-year-old barn wood, oh, that's and you, fabulous. you just yeah. can't, you know, fake it when it's no. something real that mm -hmm. has texture mm -hmm. and um, a, a history and warmth. It mm -hmm. really it it, it echoes. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit the flag that's behind us because it really is a statement on this wall. Um, so the wall was empty when we were uh, just about getting ready to open. We were um, talking with an artist about doing a custom piece for it. Mm -hmm. um, and I found this flag. It was my family's. It was um, oh, yeah. my great-great-grandparents. And they have their names inscribed on the margin of the flag. And it was from 1896, which is the same year that the building was built. Yeah. And I said, it's meant to be. Meant it, to be. 40, Perfect. 45 stars for the edition of Utah in 1896. Mm -hmm. And I have a photo, which I'll share with you. Um, 
of it hanging over my family's farmhouse in 1899, Fourth of July weekend. And it just seemed like it was such a perfect natural fit. Oh, absolutely. We're a new American restaurant, and we mm -hmm. honor the Amer our American heritage, mm -hmm. uh, culinary heritage, mm -hmm. and uh, the history here in Summit. And I just thought it was just a great fit yeah, for us. Yeah, it is perfect. It is just perfect. And it's perfect in that spot because when you come through the door and you look across the room, that becomes your focal right there, mm -hmm. right there. So let's go in the kitchen with Martin and see what we can mix up. Thank you, gentlemen. I really appreciate it. We're in the kitchen with Chef Martin. Thank you for welcoming us into this beautiful space. It's a great kitchen. And as I said before, you can walk down Maple Street and just take a look in and see all the wonderful creations going on in here. And speaking of creations, what are you making today for us? So this is one of our dishes that have been on our menu. Um, you know, here at Summit House, we're all about uh, seasonality, but also sustainability. And one of the items that we offer is a uh, product called Wester Ross Salmon. It's a uh, hand-reared, farm-raised fish from Northwest Scotland. Uh, it's organically raised with no hormones, no antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and uh, what are we cooking that with today? Skinless? Skin yes, yeah, skinless. Okay. Um, it's got a nice uh, fat content on it, so it's, you know, very luxurious Beautiful cut. Beautiful color. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're pairing it right now with some black beluga lentils, and uh, we have parsnips that we're buying locally right now, and uh, we're cooking them three different ways. We have some pureed, some shaved raw into a salad with a little bit of chervil, and then some that we have roasted along with some other baby carrots as well. <gasps> Looks like it's going to be delicious. Excellent. Let's get cooking. Let's get cooking. So what do we do first? We're going to warm up our root vegetables a little bit and a little bit of lightly toasted butter. Just let those roast. We're just going to put our lentils on to warm a little bit with some butter and water. So this whole surface is heated? Yes. So this, ah. is, so this is called a flat top, but more specifically it's called a French top. And on a French top, you have one strong central burner. So, you know, this is basically your high heat. And then anything that you move away from it is a little bit less heat. So you have, cool. you have a lot of options to move things around and pick things up. But the cool thing about this, rather than an open burner, is on one of these burners, we can get six to eight different pans. Where on a burner that was the same size, you might get two. Get two. Whereas, you know, mm -hmm. if you try to move something around on an open burner, they'll usually tip over. So sure, you're right. Pretty much stuck with just two burners. Right. So it's a lot more efficient. I know that use feeling. Space. Tipping over. <laughs> Gonna add a little bit of canola oil. And you so know this goes quick, huh? Yeah, it's gonna go very quick. And you know your pan's the right temperature when you put it in there, and the oil starts to run like water, and uh -huh. the fish doesn't stick. Uh -huh. That's exactly what you're looking for. Well, that's good. No yep. sticky fish. That can be a problem. Mm -hmm. so we're starting to get a little bit of caramelization yes. on our vegetables mm -hmm. here. This is definitely the part that I like most about cooking, is just the repetitive process and seeing how things evolve uh -huh. right in front of your eyes. You get, you get a sixth sense of when things are about to be ready. So Martin, you were telling me you always wanted to be in the restaurant business in some way, shape, or form. What was your first job in the restaurant business? Uh, my first job in the restaurant business was uh, working at my friend's pizzeria, just doing simple things like folding boxes. and cutting cheese and helping roll the dough really the and stuff basics. like that. Yeah, very much the basics of what they do. And, uh, you know, I just kind of fell in love with the reputation, uh, you know, repetition of it and uh -huh. um, seeing what little piece that you put to it come out as a great final product is, you know, very Terrific. satisfying. And where did you go to school? I went to the Culinary Institute of America up mm -hmm. in Poughkeepsie, New York. Mm -hmm. uh, graduated in 2003. and. You know, returned back to this area that I knew that I wanted to cook in because mm -hmm. you know this is where my family is. And, another um, local part to this restaurant. Another right? local part to this restaurant. Yep. Born and raised right here in northern New Jersey. Okay. We just add a little bit of butter. Oh. We're gonna very lightly baste our fish. How do you like your salmon cooked? Um, kind of rare. Kind of rare. Perfect. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't Good. like it too cooked. Good. Because I think you ruin the fish a little bit. Absolutely. Now, I'm interested, you put that in, this is actually the, the skin side, is it? This, yeah, this is the yes. skin side. So, we'll, so you're browning the top. What yeah, is, we usually sear okay. the flesh side. Okay. That's flesh that side. usually is your more uh, presentation ready yeah. side. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
So then you did uh, some time. I sound like I got you in prison. You no. did some time up at uh, 90 Acres yes. in Peapack Gladstone. Yes. Again, another local farm to table restaurant. Absolutely. Yeah, it's. Um, Chef Elton and I worked together at the Pokemon Inn for five years. Oh, okay. And then we both gravitated over towards 90 Acres and, you know, just kind of slowly built up that network of local farms and relationships mm -hmm. that just kind of came to identify the food that we wanted to And do. are there a lot of people out there growing for, for restaurants, uh, local farmers? Yeah. Um, and have you seen it increase? Yes. When I graduated from school in 2003, it was like, you know, you had like your, uh, your big farms in the area that had yeah. their farm stands, but they kind of just grew everything at once. And mm -hmm. you know, when, when pumpkins were ready, they had 10,000 pounds and, and <laughs> in two or three weeks they were gone, you know? Yeah. Um, now a lot more smaller farms are catering to restaurants where they're growing things for an extended season with, uh, you know, planting things in succession. So they have things for, you know, Long eight periods. to 12 weeks yeah. rather than yeah. the, like, Three week glut of corn and yeah. then it's gone, you know. And then it's gone. And, uh, you know, it's definitely been a great. So they've really risen to the challenge of, um, you know, servicing you. Absolutely. That's great. And a lot of farms now, even more so, are starting to branch out and grow unique things. So you can get, you know, you can work with 10 or 15 different oh, farms and get all different products from them, which is really great. Yeah. Yep. And you do local seafood too? Yes, most of our seafood. Um, the wild caught stuff comes from right off the Atlantic seaboard, mm -hmm. most specifically in New Jersey. We get scallops that are fished off of Barnegat Light, uh, tilefish that we're using right mm. now is being caught off of our coasts. Mm. And um, you know, we're really excited about working with 40 North Oyster Company that's uh, you know, reestablishing the oyster industry all throughout the Barnegat Bay. Yeah. It was actually one of the richest oyster beds really? in the New World. And then in the 1950s had a collapse due to some sort of uh, Bacteria uh, or something? Bacterial, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, I remember. So. Not, I'm dating myself, but <laughs> I do remember. <laughs>
And at that time, I came to know like this is a business is going to can help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So then I decided instead of doing my old business, liquor store and all that, I said, let me do something healthy. So I got into health food business. So then I said, like, I checked more about it. Mm -hmm. And I realized that's not only the supplement, but supplement, there's so many uh, factor effects in the supplements. And I saw this health food business was the best because it, you help people mm -hmm. and you uh, educate them mm -hmm. and you also learn so it also yeah. helps your biz family yeah so why did you pick summit as the place oh that one is the main thing uh, i wanted a, like a best healthy town mm -hmm. and i waited six months to find the location i travel all over new jersey did you oh yeah every town you name it and then summit is a town first time when i came i felt some different vibes and i'm more i'm more into vibes and I said, wow, I noticed like people are healthy, they are in a families. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of family values here. And I just saw average people like over here, they were so happy. So I kind of liked this town at the first time. Then other thing, uh, then one day I was traveling from here, I bought my mom here. And wow. my mom, when she came to this town, she said, this is the America of 1977. Oh. She came here first time in 1977. Mm -hmm. I was back in India that time. Mm -hmm. She came back and said, like, America is like this and that. So I said, wow, I should move there one day. So when I came here in 90s, it was totally different. Mm -hmm. So I remember asking my mom that time, where is that America? Yeah. And when she came here, she said, "This, don't you feel that my book was right? And yes, she was right. Samit, I'm like, I cannot be more luckier than yeah. anything. But you also told me when you were a kid, that your mother or your grandmother always gave you turmeric. We were talking about turmeric last time we Correct. were here. So you you must have had some some good um, your healthy upbringing in India. Yes, uh, my grandmother always used to give make us drink turmeric milk every night. Oh. She would sit uh, like half an hour, make turmeric milk certain ways. So that was our remedy. But when you cook turmeric milk with uh, turmeric with milk, it becomes antibiotic. That wow. is the latest doctor did the research, but I was doing it like long back. Yeah. And my uncle is Ayurvedic doctor. So we grew up like seeing him all doing this mm -hmm. natural remedy. Mm -hmm. But back then I didn't believe in that yeah. because turmeric milk does not taste great. <laughs> but it's a funny color. It can make your oh, teeth yellow. It can, but it is the best thing. It yeah. is an antibiotic and has so many benefits. Yeah. And now turmeric is a big anti-inflammatory. It cleans, uh, protects your brain cell against Alzheimer. It uh, cleans your liver and has m many, many more benefits. So that should be something with, that we're all taking, would you say, pretty much? We all should, but the right kind. The right That's kind. where the reality comes. Okay. People just hear turmeric, they go after turmeric. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of research, what kind of turmeric, mm -hmm. how it should be made. Because there's a lot of products, they are not really, it's better not to take that. Really? Really? Yeah. So tell me about the supplement world. Tell me um, what people should be looking for. You were saying you were very busy because it was flu season. If I were to come in here and say, oh, my husband has the flu, um, what should he be taking? For flu, what we recommend, actually there are research has been done, uh, natural remedies, uh, black elderberry, mm -hmm. uh, oil of oregano, and andragophus vitamin C, all those cures, it helps to get better from the flu. Mm -hmm. So that, that'll that make you heal a little faster. Yeah. yeah, much faster, yeah. So you don't have to take all the antibiotics and everything that they hand you over the counter or your doctor prescribes, because I hate that stuff. I'm, I'd rather try at least doing it with natural before I go to the medicines. Yeah, I agree with that. Antibiotic has its own place, mm -hmm. but when you can kill with pen, why use gun? You well, know? that's true. That's true. So tell me a little about the supplement world, what you've, what you've learned and what you can pass on to our viewers. Okay, in supplement, like uh, what kind you take, it is very important. There's thousands and thousands of supplements in the market, but they're all not clean. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure what kind of product you take. Uh, like just said, the multivitamin. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful where vitamin comes from, like vitamin A, B, C, all those. Mm -hmm. Because if it comes made in the laboratory, we don't like that. Mm -hmm. But all of our vitamin, what we carry, like uh, they make it from food. Oh. So vitamin A, they derive from carrot. Mm -hmm. Vitamin C comes from orange. D from nutritionally is the brown rice. So everything is natural and is from mm -hmm. food source. Not only that, that all food, they are made in US and they are non-GMO, organic, pesticide-free, because okay. they can be whole food, but how they make, that is different. Yeah. 
because when the mega food they make those vitamins they compress the f- nutrition inside and put it on a dryer so what happens you get all nutrition inside you do, they don't break down okay so then okay. you can take it even on empty stomach it does not upset your stomach plus you get pure. all it is pure yeah and you get all nutrition benefits yeah. Okay, so now I'm just getting into supplements. What would you recommend to me um, to take as like a basic supplement regimen? Okay, basic, I always say like for adult is a daily vitamin, mm-hmm. uh, multi, uh, fish oil, mm-hmm. and vitamin D depend how low you are. Mm-hmm. Because vitamin D is 70 to 80 percent people has a deficiency. No kidding, that many, yeah. huh? And especially this tri-state has a more because uh, it's like not enough sun and when mm-hmm. we go to sun, yes. we put SPF. So vitamin D always get it checked. Mm-hmm. Then next thing is probiotic mm-hmm. for the healthy gut, mm-hmm. turmeric. So those five things I would say those are basic. And then you can always ask yourself what you need. If you want something for hair, something for skin, something for joints, something mm-hmm. for immune system. And accordingly you can build up your mm-hmm. things. But those are the daily those fish the oil, basics. turmeric, and probiotic are the basic. You were telling me about a customer you had that couldn't sleep. And you, um, she bought, you, you recommended that she buy something. And she came back in and told you how wonderful she was sleeping. Tell me that story again. Yeah, a lot of time what happens, people take vitamins. The timings are very important in all this vitamin. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, so what happens, she was taking at the wrong timing. And then she had an issue with the sleeping, so I really recommend her one product we call Dream Release. Mm-hmm. That has all natural thing, as a magnesium, valerian, ashwagandha, vaverine. So and uh, so, what it does, it helps you actually remember the dreams. And yeah. when you remember your dream, means you had a good night's sleep. Really? The lucid dreams they talk about. And with this product, actually, you just take one a day, and people sleep excellent. They start remembering dream. And that customer, she said, like, she never slept better like that. She was happy in the morning. Yeah. And woke up and was fresh and awake and everything. Correct. Yeah, not, not that sluggish feeling no. you feel when you take a yes. drug drug. So what, um, tell me about timing. I just heard you talking to a customer about when um, her son should be taking the, the supplements that she um, bought. Is there a, like a, a rule or a guide you can go by? I would, uh, it's like, it, I would get them like, you know, take uh, vitamins in the morning and mm-hmm. minerals at night. Okay. Because mineral absorbs better when our body is at rest. Okay. Some statin drug, you should take it at night, like at night when you're sleeping. But always daily vitamin, you should take it in the morning. Mm-hmm. And sometimes some uh, spices and probiotic, you should keep it on a separate time. Okay. Because they both work and then they, we don't want like, we want hundred percent benefit. Okay. So vitamins, spices all together, minerals at night, probiotic by itself. Uh-huh. So okay. th- those timings are very important. Yeah. B vitamins always in the morning. Do you do you recommend that you always take them with food or can you can can you just take them, take them? Depend on the vitamin. The vitamin what we carry, those are from food. So that's a benefit. You can even take it on mm-hmm. empty stomach. Okay. But like omega-3, that's a fat. So we always recommend that take it with the food because the fats absorb better when we have food in our body. So it's all vitamins that some you should take it with the food, some you can take it by itself. So you're here on Springfield Avenue, right on the corner of Beachwood Road. And um, you have a Facebook page? Yes, we do have a Facebook page. If people wanted to get in touch with you, they could also give you a call, right? Yes, anytime. And what is your number here? It's the 908-522-1212. Great. Thank you so much, Dusar, for having us in today and educating us on the world of supplements. It was very informational. Thank you. So that's our show for today. I want to remind you that the Summit House is serving a fabulous brunch on Sundays, and they do lunch on Wednesday through Saturday, I believe. But check them out on their social media. They're on Instagram and Facebook, and uh, they also have a website. So take a look at them. And I also wanted to mention to you that if you coming to uh, Summit and you're not familiar with the town, go to summitdowntown.org org's website and you can find out about all the shops we have in town all the restaurants and all the special promotions that are going on thanks so much for joining us we'll see you next time 